you know, when you're in a profession where guys are constantly looking over their shoulders, wondering who's who's going to take their position, but you mm -hmm. are so secure in who you are and what you do, you go out and endorse them drafting a Cam Jurgens. Yeah, what did you yeah. see in this young man? What did you see in him? Well, I mean, he's got a lot of tools. I mean, he's incredibly athletic, uh, very very strong. Uh, he's got long arms. He finishes plays. He's a hard worker. Uh, I mean, pretty much everything you want to see, you saw in him. Um, you know, I, first of all, I think the world of Cam Jurgens. I think he yep. has the potential to be better than I have ever been as a center with this skill set he has. And I'm excited to watch that growth as a player and to get an opportunity here at right guard to play this year, especially. Um, but he, um, I've seen so many guys handle it the way you just said, D-Gun, of like, who's yep. trying to take my job? And it never works out. Yep. It always ends bad. Like if you, if the guy is going to end up being better than you and taking your job, it's going to happen. Yep. Now you can either be, you know, pissy about it and have a bad attitude and choose not to be a functioning member of a team and help the guy uh, and be remembered that way. Or mm -hmm. you can be a part of this and you can like, at the very least, if the guy's better than me or if the guy's, whoever I am and there's somebody behind me and he ends up starting like he's going to, if he's a great player, yep. you can either be the guy that's remembered as this guy did everything to prevent me from getting this job and didn't help me at all. Or you can be the guy that's like, Hey, this guy helped me get there. And he yep. was a part of my success and career. And I've always like, I just, it, it just, I've seen so many guys take the wrong mindset on it. Yeah. And it, it just is, it's not good for the team. It's not good for the room. And it's really just not good for them because then ultimately it ends up staining their kind of um, legacy. So um, having witnessed that, I think that, you know, and also being at a point in my career where quite frankly, if he, if he takes my job, I'm fine with it. I think, I think all of that is all of that uh, goes into it. I, I read something. I can't remember what it was, or it might have been on on, on New Heights. I but yeah. you uh, you made reference to Howard Mudd, and yeah. and I think people forget. I'm trying. To, this is your fourth regime, right? I mean, you went Andy, Chip, Doug, and yeah. now and now yeah. Nick, right? Yeah. Yep. First of all, that's incredibly rare. But yeah, Howard Mudd was the guy who really had that faith in you from the jump. I think Howie was talking about it on your on on New yes. Heights. Yep. Yeah, that's what it was. So, but it, I thought it was really funny the way. Like Howie was like, "Hey, we like this guy, but calm down, Howard." The Howard's yeah. like, "This dude's your starting center," and Howie yeah. was like, "Are you feeling all right?" Like, how much did he mean to you, Howard? Mudd? Oh man, I I I don't know if I'm here today without Howard. Mudd. I'm probably not, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and Howie kind of said that in the interview. Um, you know, Howard had it brought a new mindset of how to evaluate offensive linemen to the Eagles organization. Before Howard, it was all, you know, how big is this guy? How long is he? you know, all of the conventional metrics of an offensive lineman. And Howard really believed that athleticism was more important than any of that stuff. You still need to have baseline levels of power, strength, and size, and that helps. But more than anything, you got to have athletes out on the field. And, um, you know, he – I didn't know he was that big of a fan, I guess, when I was drafting the sixth round, the third offensive lineman taken. I was like, you know, can't be that big of a fan. There's other guys getting taken before me. But, um, you know, I, I knew – you know, the moment I started going out there and his response to how I was playing that he was in my corner for sure. I mean, I, I, I didn't get gifted a starting job, but I got gifted a, uh, a job to compete for. I mean, most six round players aren't even afforded that, right? Like right. you're, you're in there. Maybe you get a chance to compete for a job uh, down the road, but for the most part, you're probably a special teams guy or you're a depth guy right off the get right off the um right from the get-go and mm -hmm. howard you know very early on you know said you know do you want to start you want to play this year and i'm like are you yeah of course i want to play <laughs> i didn't i didn't know that was an option but yeah i'm in and he's like well just get to know your playbook and uh you know we had a guy in jamal jackson who was very uh yeah. you know had been in the league for a very long time and uh was you know had proven success and a proven commodity so it was it, it was certainly you know, very, very fortunate to one, have Howard in there vouching for me, but also to two, have Howard there, you know, teaching me all of these skills and, and techniques and things 
that an undersized player can use to his advantage and excel with? 